So all these aspects are there about the health. And one central point about the health is it is not just the absence of a disease. And there is a positive uh, attitude, positive aspect to it also. So um, mind has two uh, functions our mind has two functions, the thinking and feeling, or creation of thoughts and creation of uh, response or feeling. So thought is an action and feeling is the response of uh, what's happening outside or even inside, but still outside of me, outside of I, the soul. So one is an action, one is a response. Both are the functions of the mind. And for healthy mind, we need to have health in both these aspects. Physically, we know uh, to remain, to become physically strong, uh, we have to exercise, good diet, good rest, etc. cetera. Um, healthy mind, healthy thoughts. Also, we can understand how we can create healthy thoughts. But what about the healthy emotion? Because it is in response to something outside. So how I can uh, make it healthy? How I can uh, make it strong and powerful that we will learn? So healthy thought and healthy emotions, they both go hand in hand. And similarly, the healthy uh, body also is part of it. The healthy body leads to healthy emotions and healthy emotions leads to healthy body, vice versa. We will look at this. But first, let us understand what is emotional uh, strength. Uh, it is a balanced, mature, positive response. And what's the meaning of that? Uh, let's say uh, an event occurred outside and it created a negative response in me, an anger or irritation. It has to be balanced with another um, aspect, another emotional aspect within me. Because emotions are positive and negative broadly. The positive emotions are associated or they're rooted from my positivity, peace, power, love, happiness, bliss, knowledge and purity. The negative emotions, they arise from the negative aspects, lust, anger, greed, ego, attachment. Um, so if a negative emotion, if a situation creates a negative emotion, it has to be balanced by a positive emotion within me to have that emotional strength. Um, it is normal and natural to feel irritated, angered by something or fearful in some situations. You cannot stop possibly 
these emotions. But what you can do is you can balance that. So that's the part of the balanced uh, emotion. So if a fear is created, I can balance it with my inner strength. If an irritation or anger is created by a situation outside, then from within, I can balance that uh, with my peace. And every negative emotion, I can counterbalance with something positive within me. And mature response means it is not naive, it is appropriate. And the situation may outside, uh, maybe whatever, but the response in different minds may be different. And the type of response one creates is depends on their level of maturity. So an appropriateness of the uh, emotion that I generate is also important. Um, in some situation, uh, once again, in the example of anger, um, if a person's uh, behavior causes anger or ir irritation within you, then the central question to ask is, was it an appropriate response? Because the person could be suffering from something. And if you created an anger, that is not mature response. So that maturity has to be there. Appropriateness of the emotion, the development, the development of emotion is very important. The third aspect of emotional strength is positive, positivity. The response has to be positive. What does that mean? If I just um, block a negative emotion, uh, for example, uh, in an anger situation, if I don't create an anger and just remain silent, it is just a blocking of that negativity. I have not created a positive response. And we call this as emotional strength because it's a, it's a power that I can use to transform. So if something is negative outside, I not only block that, but I create a positivity to counter that in a very effective way that can transform the, the root problem of that negativity. So it helps not only me, it helps the, um, the other also, the cause for the emotion. So that is the, counter, the, abs, uh, the counterbalance part of the positive response. Why it is important. Uh, if we have a good response to everything that happens outside or in, in ourselves, if something happens to the body, we can have uh, sorrow along with the pain. Um, if something happens in the mind, we could have some negative mental emotion. Um, anything can happen in the relations. Something can happen in, in my economical situation or in my world. So how I respond, it's, it depends on my emotional makeup. So if I'm emotionally strong, then I can be generally very stable. I can generally have a happy response. So even if there is a sorrow occurring, a sorrowful um, a situation, I can have that baseline happiness in me that will not uh, drag me into sorrow that much. 
I can tend to remain uh, more happier. So my happiness will counterbalance that uh, sorrow. And happiness is, is a, a very positive um, emotion. In fact, it cannot be called as emotion, but it's a, it's a virtue, but just for the purpose of this, uh, the uh, contrasting, you can say happiness is a positive emotion, but it's my, it's my uh, core value or virtue. Um, the other could be love. So I am generally happy with everything. Something happens, I'm happy. Uh, and that happiness gives me contentment. I am satisfied with what I have, what little things I may have. Uh, my expectation level is very low. I'm happy with my relations, I'm content. I'm content with my job. Uh, if my boss gives me an extra work, I'm okay with that because I have this inner happiness and I can balance my uh, negative response with my positivity. If something breaks down, I'm okay with that because of the internal positive uh, force that I have. So I remain content in all situations. Because I'm content, I have a perfect harmony with my uh, people that I live with, the, the relatives and my contacts and my world and the nature. I have perfect harmony with them. I don't have to take anything from them, only I can, uh, only I have to give. So that harmony I create uh, because of this, uh, my uh, positive or strong emotional outlook. And because I don't have anything to take uh, from anyone, I am very quiet inside. There's no turbulence, I am peaceful. Uh, my uh, interior is not cloudy. It's very clear. And because of that, I can see very clearly outside. I can see the other people's feelings. I can feel them. I can understand them better. And so I am empathetic. I'm a very good caregiver because of that. And also because of the strong uh, emotional outlook, I can be very resilient. I can deal with uh, little problems easily. Even big problems will not pull me down. I can bounce back very easily because of my inner positivity. I'm a very good team player because of all these virtues. Um, all these uh, uh, values that are associated with emotional strength. And because of that, all this leads to success. I'm very successful in everything that I do. My work, my home, my uh, any project that I have, my future projects, I am very successful because of that, uh, this uh, uh, strength. And so you can understand uh, how important it is to learn uh, this very valuable um, aspect. And because uh, emotion is a response, um, it is different than the uh, the physical strength, etc. I depend, my response depends on what is happening outside. And so the best way to learn 
the the best way to become emotionally strong is by learning through our uh, examples through the through the examples of what happens outside and in response what we create and how we can uh, make that better that is the exercise that we we if we did that we we can become uh, strong and so uh, we're going to look at several um, uh, situations and we're going to look at how uh, we can emotionally become uh, strong by learning that. So the first situation is when you're confronted with an angry soul, um, what is the what is the normal response? What is uh, a good response? Do you try to correct that angry person? Or do you have a feeling of pity or some negative feeling for them? Or do you have a feeling that they don't understand and they will get better? What kind of feelings occur and what kind of thoughts occur? Because thoughts and feelings, they go hand in hand. And uh, as is the feeling will be, as will be your thoughts. So if you see very closely these three responses, they have very common, uh, there's commonality in that one. Uh, in each of, each of these three responses, you can see that uh, you have found something negative in that person. When you try to correct them, you have judged them uh, incorrect. When you have a feeling of pity for them, you have a feeling uh, that they are lacking something. And uh, if you have a feeling that they don't understand and they will get better, and if you have a wish that they will get better, then also it is a negative feeling because you are, uh, you are creating an emotion that, that they are lacking something they don't know. So there is a negative notion to that. So all of these are negative. Uh, way of responding to the soul. So what is the best way to respond? What is a strong way? What is, how do you uh, create a strong uh, emotional response? The first response is, you can divide that into two parts because something is coming from outside uh, you can respond to what's coming from outside. Second, as we saw in earlier, you can create something positive. So you can create something to counter. Okay, so the first thing, the best thing uh, you, you can do is accept. Even if the person is wrong, accept them. Why? Because uh, in my view, the person is wrong, but in their own view, they're right. And you are in a position to transform them. And to facilitate that, your first thing that you do is accept, accept them. And once you accept them, they don't feel rejected. You open a door for them to transform and then you create a positivity. That's the way to do. And how do you do that? What, what do you, what kind of power do you use? You use a power to accommodate. Um, just like the ocean, you expand and when you expand, you 
drown or you dilute the negativity that is inside you. There are many impurities come into the ocean, but ocean still remains uh, chemically the same because of its vastness. So likewise, if we expand and accept any negativity, we can dilute that anger or irritation that's coming from outside. And we allow, we allow the soul to transform. Uh, just like the oyster shell here, it accepts the uh, impurities in. It does not reject the impurity and a dust particle falls in the oyster shell and it matures into a beautiful pearl. So same way, we expand, accept and allow to transform. So we transform the negativity into positivity. We don't force goodness. We don't give them lecture that you need to be better. We don't force goodness on them. Rather, we let them be, we allow them, we accept them and create a very beautiful positive environment within us. And our flexibility provides them that supportive environment to change. So we not only um, protected ourselves, we also uh, transformed the root of that negativity. How do you respond to your own negativity? Our negativity originates from the five vices of lust, anger, greed, attachment, ego. And what is your response, immediate response when this negativity is created inside? Do you succumb to it? Do you go with the flow? Do you feel powerless? Do you resist? Do you resist at all? What do you do? How do you respond? If we go downwards a slippery slope, then we need to learn two techniques. First is SOS technique. Stop, observe, and steer to safety. So if the first thing is identification, identify that I am creating a negative a thought. I'm creating a negativity. And then once you identify, you stop. Apply a powerful break because the negativity has a fast speed. So apply a powerful break means stop. Resist the downward slope, stop. Then because you are in a situation, you cannot see clearly where to go. So what you do is rise above, and from a higher stage, you observe the situation. Then you will have a better clarity of your situation. You will understand the a problem and you can respond it better. So you will have a higher chance of going towards the positivity lesser chance of going down the negativity. So that's observe and steer to safety. That's a very important aspect. 
not only you stop the negativity, you have to do something so that you go towards a good place. So that means you create a good thought. You create a powerful, positive thought. So basically, the three loaded powers are involved to apply this technique. One is stopping. Second is rising above, elevating your level of st elevating your stage from where you can have a bigger picture. You can understand better situation. And a third is create a positive thought. Now, when you say stop, what do you do? What do you stop? Stop the fear, the anxiety, the sensitive nature. Stop why, what, how, and stop your desires and wishes because these will drag you down. To stop those and observe and change the direction. Now, how do you create a positive thought? That is a very important aspect. Uh, I will briefly tell you, giving an example. Uh, everything that we see in this world is the result of a thought. It is a thought that lead to a design. It is the design that leads to creation of a building. Just an example. So you can, you can, uh, you can say that the thought is the seed. So how do you create that thought here? in the physical world. First thing that you have to know is you are, you are a soul. That is the first basic uh, a factor in creating the thought because once you know that you are a, a, a pure soul, then your level, your consciousness is different than the body consciousness. The seed is different. The seed is powerful. And your awareness, what you understand you are, is different than as a body. If I think I am Mr. So-and-so, then my... Uh, Understanding is different. The seed of the thought that subsequent thoughts that will occur will be different than when I am a peaceful soul. Two different things. So as you can see, uh, what we generally do is we work on our environment. We work on changing uh, the soil, the water, the uh, the atmosphere, even the sunlight, we modify these things so that uh, we will have a good plant. Uh, this TWA is thoughts, words, and actions. So this is a thought we try to create. And what we do is we work on everything except for the seed. That's what we do. Uh, and what's the result of that? we will put a tremendous amount of effort in creating a good thought, a positive thought. We'll get tired, but the thought that will occur, the action that will occur, the words that will come out, it will depend on the stage. It will still, it can still come out negative because I have not worked on the seed. So if I do everything, tremendous effort in my body consciousness, 
then what I generate is this. That's my body consciousness. And these are the five vices. And as a result of this, what I have is worry, fear, laziness, carelessness, disheartenment, arrogance, doubt, jealousy, irritation, revenge, and many more branches and fruits. So without working on the seed, that's what I get. So it is a wise, it is wisdom to work on the seed. That means I need to work on who I am. I need to work on my consciousness, my awareness. And it does, it's not that if, I, if I'm in a, um, a situation, in the middle of the situation, if I uh, try to say that I'm a peaceful soul, that it's going to work. No, I have to practice being that. I have to practice being that seed. I have to practice being the soul. And it's a long process, but with practice and determination, you can have um, your internal makeup such that all your thoughts will be nice and positive. You just have to put your heart and mind into it and you can do it. Another aspect of the um, uh, responding um, in a, uh, the, your internal uh, negativity is delaying instant gratification. Uh, it is more like the first of the SOS, the stop part of the SOS technique where you stop your negative train and then you come to senses and you go in the right direction. But uh, a lot of time it's not possible to do that. You don't have that power because negativity can just pull you. And so if you don't have that power, then at least you can delay. You can delay, okay, um, I know that I'm, I'm getting dragged into this negativity, anger situation or whatever, or greed. You just postpone it. And by doing that, you will win. And it only takes a few, few seconds of postponing to win that. And so if you can delay your instant gratification, few seconds, maybe 15 to 20 seconds, just delay not now, let me wait. That's it, that's all you need because negativity does not have that power, uh, more power than that stamina that you have. So you can gain that ground and then you can win. So that's a very important uh, method to make yourself emotionally strong. So if you get drawn, if you are talking to somebody and if you go downwards, uh, into argument, you can immediately put a either full, full stop and change the direction, or if you cannot full, full stop, postpone it. Let me not get irritated. Let me postpone it for 15 seconds. What is your response to your past painful events? Um, do you hold those memories like your most precious treasures, the past memories, past painful memories. Do you hold them close to your heart as if they're very precious to you? Do you hold somebody, someone else responsible for the burden that you carry? And do you wish that somebody else the, the one who caused that should relieve you of that burden. Do you have this type of response to your past 
burden, past memories, past negative memories. Um, and before we go further, let us first understand why the past is such difficult. Why uh, it appears so big? What's the problem? Why the past is so hard to erase from our memory? We may not remember good things, but we remember a nasty comment from somebody years ago or a, a negative behavior of someone that affected you many, many uh, months ago. You remember that very clearly. You remember all the negativity so clearly. Why? To an outsider, it may seem like a very simple, simple thing. And it may seem like why you're holding that. Somebody just slapped you, so what? Why are you holding that for 20, 25 years? So why it is big like that? Because we made it big. Every day that we think about that without resolving, we make it bigger. And you can imagine if uh, we, we remember something negative over and over for years, it just keeps growing again more and more, and it becomes like a huge mountain. Uh, so what we see actually is not what it is actually. Uh, so our perception of that past is very different. Every day that we spend without resolving the perception will change into more negative. So what is the right emotional response and what is the right response? You have to know, discern. You have to understand the problem better. And to understand, you have to rise above the body consciousness. You have to have a, a bird's eye view. You have to have a bigger picture uh, as to why the problem occurred and what should be my normal response, my response now. Something similar to uh, what we saw earlier. So rising above means what? When I am in a situation, I am at one level of my awareness that I am so-and-so, so I am a victim and I'm affected by something. When I rise above that victim uh, label and I become, I'm a soul, I'm a pure, powerful soul. I'm strong one and I'm not affected. I'm not a victim. So that stage, the soul conscious stage, a pure soul conscious stage can give you a right perspective of what the, what the problem was or problem is from the, um, that you're looking, the past problem that appears like a huge mountain. So you can see it. Oh, well, that's, that's nothing. So you can easily cross that. So that's a power to discern. If we have that internally, we can create a very uh, elevated response to our past. Currently, what we do is we create a very negative response to our past. We suffer big time. So we need to uh, have that soul consciousness so that we can remove uh, that negative, we can feel, uh, uh, we can feel light, you know, all the burden that we carry. So you can see the problem in the right perspective. And what you need is, uh, you need, need uh, yoga, basically, yoga, silence, and knowledge. That's what you need.
another aspect of um, past. How do you, how do you respond? Uh, how do you create a powerful positive response to the past? Uh, is let go. Um, let go means uh, don't engage into that past. Very easy to say, but very difficult to do. You know, people have negative emotions from the past and a lot of people go into depression because of that. How do you let go of such a huge problem? Even if you rise above, like we saw in the previous slide, and see that, oh, it's happened because of that, uh, this and this, you can still not overcome. So you use this another tool, let go. And uh, what's the best way? There are uh, uh, one technique to let go is being mindful. Uh, mindful meaning don't live in the past. Don't live in the future. Remain in presence, present. So be in present, 100%. With your uh, mind, with your heart, with your intellect, everything in present. So we can be thought from the thought, we can be present, but our heart can still be in the past. That I can create a thought that, okay, I'm here. I'm not going to think about the past. I'll let it go. And I'm sitting in silence and I'm trying to meditate. Let's see if I can get rid of my past emotion that I was holding. But if my heart is still attached to that past, I, it's not mindfulness. Mindfulness means my total presence to now. And... Uh, uh, the way to do that uh, is to learn to live uh, in uh, present. Uh, little things that you do, you know, eating the way you eat, the way you uh, walk, the, the way you work, everything that you do, you uh, consciously bring your yourself into that present don't allow yourself to go into the past or in the future because we like to escape uh, if not past we escape into something else some fantasy world that let me uh, go to a beach so that i can not have this negative thoughts of the past and let me feel that cool breeze that's, that could be escapism also. Be in the present. Learn to be in the present first. That, that's mindfulness. And uh, we can uh, practice and learn be, being mindful uh, by observing uh, our daily uh, things that we do and try to be in the present. Look at every moment as new moment. And that's a part of the mindfulness. The second aspect of letting go, how you can let go is becoming knowledgeful. Understand the bigger picture. Understand uh, what your response will create in the future. Understand where the negativity came from and understand your present situation. So this is the same thing as uh, the discerning power, so being knowledgeful. Uh, another aspect of letting go is uh, um, when you let go of something, then uh, you create a vacuum, basically. You're carrying a big load and all of a sudden the load is not there no more and you have vacuum, there's nothing. Uh, that vacuum can be dangerous. So don't let the 
vacuum be just like vacant because it will be quickly filled by the, uh, the strongest force that is there within you. And in, in your memory is sitting this negativity for years. That negativity will quickly refill that, that vacuum if you don't fill it. So what you do is you fill that with a positivity. Uh, and the, um, the purest positive uh, thing that you fill in is remembrance, remembrance of God. So let go and be in remembrance of God. Feel the love, uh, feel the uh, peace through that connection with the Supreme Soul, Supreme Father, uh, and feel empowered. And let that uh, empowered uh, feeling or fullness drown or dilute the past negativity. That's the third aspect of letting go. How do you respond to a disease in your body? to a social problem like a war situation or economical problem? How do you respond to these? Um, in the body conscious stage, we go, our stage drops as the things that is outside. So if a disease occurs, I naturally feel down. I feel uh, sorrow. I feel scared. Uh, a war situation, I'm very insecure. Uh, I feel uh, weak and I'm scared. Uh, economical problems, I feel, uh, you know, a lot of negativity because of that. So how do you? What is the a strong way of responding to these uh, situations? What you have to do is you have to have the self-respect. You have to know who you are. Because like we were discussing, as a body, I will get pulled towards more negativity. But as a soul, if I'm a soul, I'm a strong, powerful soul, then disease will not pull me down. The war will not make me weak. And poverty or uh, economical problem will not pull me down. So that self-respect uh, is a very uh, strong tool to create a positive emotional response to everything that happens. What, how do we respond to our work? Um, all of us who work or who have worked before, we understand that it is a, a tremendous force uh, that can just drown uh, your original nature and you become completely different person. Uh, the work stress, the expectation of the uh, superiors, the bosses, uh, and the uh, stress uh, of the work in every kind of job, etc., can really uh, make you a very different a person and uh, you become a hard shell, like a coconut, hard shell, soft core person. That means uh, you keep work, work, work all day long and you become a really a person who would not uh, seemingly uh, get affected by things. But inside I have this uh, softness that uh, hardness that I develop outside is very artificial. So do you have, do you become that hard shell soft core by uh, 
uh, through your work situation. And uh, do you have to be tough? Because uh, the people depend on you. Do you have to have that toughness in you? Because you are, uh, you are the one, you are the boss. Do you have to be like that? Do you have that feeling of, of uh, you are the one who is responsible? It's uh, your shoulder who carries everything. Do you have that feeling? And so what is the right response to your work? Do you, is it, is it normal to be like that? Because the work situation will make you like that. And is it uh, a strong way, uh, a strong emotional response, or is there a better, one, better than that? What do you think? And so good, uh, uh, if we are like that, let's say I'm a hard shell, I'm a coconut. Uh, the problem is uh, not only I don't get affected by negativity, I also don't get affected by positivity. That means I become like a person who is not responding to even good things. So when I come home from work, I'm uh, still in that mode and I'm, I'm unable to create that happiness or share with the family members. So that hardness of the shell does just like that. Uh, another thing that happens is because I have a soft inside, if a strong negative uh, incident outside can break the hard shell, then it can completely shatter me. So all it will require is a big blow to me that can break my shell and inside there's softness. Softness meaning I have very weak emotional responses inside, but I created this strongness outside me um, in response to that work. So both way you lose. So the better response is to create a better response. I have to have my internal strength. And for that, um, I have to become light. Uh, yes, I have responsibility of the work, but I need to balance that with lightness. I have to open my heart. I have to be able to, I don't let go of my uh, positive virtues because of the work. Work burden is there, doesn't mean that I cannot smile. Doesn't mean that I cannot laugh. So laughing, singing, dancing, painting, all that is important. Also, I need to be able to be very transparent. If something negative happens, then I need to be transparent. What I feel I need to be able to express. So don't lose that ability to express. Don't give up your core values, keep them. And uh, the working, uh, working in a job is like working for a short term goal. You have to know that you have longer term goals also. Um, and so balance your responsibilities with a lightness. And uh, only you can do this you have to go one, one more extra mile and you can demonstrate that you are the master who can also be the, also be light, a master who can be light and you can inspire people with your smile. And so that balance has to be there. And that balance, internal balance will give you em emotional strength. What is your response to your future? How do you respond to future? Do you get anxious? Do you get a feeling 
that why I have to do this, why I have to do this, why not others? Do you have that feeling to a future task? And so this is similar to uh, the, uh, the response that we learn in the work. Okay, so how I look at the work and how I become a hard shell, similar to that. So what is the uh, strong response that I can create? Instead of feeling anxious, can I create something else? Instead of feeling uh, that it's not my job, can I create something else? And what you can do is you can say, yeah, I can do this. And this is my opportunity to rise. You see how, how different the feeling is when you create uh, this thought, when, when you create such feeling of ownership, when you create uh, the feeling of confidence. So a feeling is confidence, I, I can do this. And then the thought will occur, fine, I can do it. And you will not have that anxious thought. And the feeling is, this is my opportunity. You will have enthusiasm. You will not feel that somebody else need to do this. What is your relationship with your relatives, your contact, your world? How do you respond emotionally to your relatives? their behavior? How do you respond emotionally to the nature, to the souls outside? What kind of emotion that you develop when they misbehave? Uh, what kind of um, response come from you? Do you get hurt? from them or do you create and hurt for them? Do you, I, do you have that uh, ability to smile? Do you maintain that ability to smile at them? If, uh, if you have an angry soul or soul that irritates, do you have that capacity to smile at them? Do you have the, um, the power to appreciate the one who is misbehaving? Do you have that power to appreciate something in them? Do you have that power to accommodate? Do you have the power to have good wish for everyone, everyone in the world, do you have that good wish? So uh, thinking deep on these aspects of our relationship with others and the world will make us very powerful, will empower our uh, spirit, uh, emotional health. What you have to do is you have to balance. You, you have negative emotions. You have to create positive emotions and use them often. We can very easily get angry from somebody. We can e get easily get dragged into some attraction or some negativity, greed, attachment. It doesn't take more than a second to go there. But how easily I can become generous? How easily can I forgive somebody? How easily I can praise? 
how easily I can be a good caregiver, how easily I can flex myself, be flexible and appreciate and have gratitude. That's what I need to exercise. When I exercise these aspects in me, these are all inside me. I don't have to learn in the school. I just have to know that I have that, uh, I have these virtues. I just have to use them. Um, find reasons in the world to use these. Find reasons to appreciate, to feel gratitude. Find reasons to be generous. Give them gift of something nice. Give them a gift of peace to an angry mob. mob. So exercising this will make your muscles strong, the emotional muscles strong. So that's what we need to do. And it could be a bigger list, but I just noted down a few here. What is your relationship with yourself? Um, do you listen to yourself? Do you criticize yourself often? When you, when you don't listen to yourself, what that means is you reject or deny your presence, you the soul. You only work as a body because you are a combination of body and the soul. So if you don't listen to yourself, that means you are neglecting the soul aspect. And when you criticize yourself, when I criticize myself, then I reject my pure identity. I'm a soul, but I'm a pure soul. Right now, I'm a soul with impurities, but down in the core, I am a pure soul. So when I criticize myself and try to punish myself, I'm saying that I am an impure soul. When I don't listen to myself at all, I'm saying I'm a body. Then my fate will be according to the physical world. I can have death, disease, problems, worries. But I, when I identify that I'm a soul, but not identify myself with that pure soul that I am and say that I'm an impure soul, I have so-and-so dirt in me and just hold that image in me, then I'm criticizing myself. I'm trying to punish myself. I'm still having that sorrow. So these, um, this uh, exercise uh, makes me understand the importance of knowing who I am. What is my relationship with myself? I am a pure soul. When this becomes a reality, I'm a pure soul, then my relationship with myself will be very healthy. Then whatever happens to me will be always be good. I'm a pure soul. I have love, bliss, peace, power, prosperity, knowledge. 
That's who I am. With this identity, I will create positivity only. In one of the earlier slides, uh, we saw the seed, how the seed uh, leads to plant, the development of the plant. So if this is the seed, I will have only uh, a tree or fruit coming out of these aspects. Another uh, fact about I am a soul is when I am a soul, then I give myself priority. First, I am a soul. Then I am a body. Then I am a so-and-so type of worker. Then I have different labels. So listening to yourself, meaning giving yourself a priority. I'm a soul, so what is my priority? My priority is to remember who I am. Remember my father, the Supreme Soul. My priority is to create pure thoughts. So my priority is learning good knowledge. My priority is to give happiness, to serve. And then the body's agenda. With this awareness of who I am, I'll be able to take care of my body very well. Then my body's agenda is healthy food, good exercise, rest, sleep well, I'll be able to exercise these very well. And lastly, what is your relationship with God? What is my relationship with God? This aspect can make me really emotionally perfect. Once I understand what my relationship with God is, I become a, a tower. of uh, might, a lighthouse. I become a might house, a lighthouse. Uh, so turning on this aspect, I will leave it open for each of us. Uh, we need to turn within and ask this question to ourselves. What is that relationship that I have with God? And uh, what do I get? How do I create a positive uh, emotional strength through that? Uh, so this uh, talk I developed, these are the few citations that I looked in the internet. And one of the big ones was uh, emotional Well-Being by Dr. Sujata Sharma. She's a clinical psychologist in Delhi. And these are other um, citations that I went. So let's meditate. 7.46. One of the very important aspect um, to develop emotional strength is to know. Uh, all of us have uh, different patterns of responding 
And uh, these are patterns, actually. The way we respond in different situations, if you note down all of the responses and put them together, you will see that there is a pattern. There is a usually a central, you can put your finger on that, the uh, one of the negative seed seeds that we saw earlier. You can say, I'm, I'm responding like this because of this problem. So you can actually put your finger on what the problem is. And it comes down to one of the five vices, lust, anger, greed, attachment, ego. But because there's so much of ramification of that, then we, it, we can hardly recognize that uh, how we are responding and what is the base of that response. So once we understand what the basis of the response is, then we won the half the battle. We can re easily uh, change that into a very better response or we can emotionally become stronger. And so let us uh, meditate and through the meditation, see if we can uh, identify what our pattern uh, is. And uh, then we can change that. So if my pattern is of sorrow, uh, actually I can tell you my pattern is of worry. I can say that. And so I get worried into, um, and then uh, what's the cause for the worry? Attachment. And what's the cause for the attachment? Body consciousness. So right there, so I know what the problem is. So that's how, uh, but identifying is a big thing. And so let's meditate. Let go of all the all those things that you heard just now. Just let go for a few minutes. And bring yourself to the present moment. Clear your mind completely. If you are carrying any heaviness from the past, just let it go. If there is any future agenda, postpone that for a few minutes. This is our moment to empower. To identify, to learn. So bring your attention to yourself. You, the pure soul. In the center of forehead. And look at yourself as a point of light. Your pure form, the pure soul, clean image.
having secret connection with the soul world. with the Supreme Soul. And feel the empowerment to that connection. Connection with your home, the soul, soul world and the supreme soul. Feel yourself getting filled with wisdom, peace, power through that connection. Feel the peace, feel the love of the Supreme Soul. Don't let this connection break. Constantly remain aware of that connection. And now, slowly bring your attention to your problem. The burden that you had been carrying. Just observe. What is that problem? What is that weakness? that pulls you down. Can you identify Can you identify the root cause of your Worry. As a master of your mind, your intellect, and deep memories. You are observing, you're looking at the cause of that disease, the virus 
that works from within. Now bring your attention back to the home. the Supreme Soul. The Supreme Healer. The Bestower of Happiness. The one who has infinite love for you. the one whose presence can empower you beyond limits. Feel the fullness, the richness, the prosperity, the health, once again, Turn your attention to the problem and see how weak it has gotten. How insignificant it has, it has become. Keep this connection with yourself. You, the soul, having that secret connection with the invisible world. You, the soul, the actor in this drama of this world. You, the soul, playing different roles, having different responsibilities, bringing that invisible world's virtues and powers into this world. Thank you, everyone.